Hey guys, how you doing? Robert here from uh, Stratomatic Replay. And uh, today I thought I'd give a little bit of a sneak preview first of my next upcoming replays. Uh, we're about we're approaching the uh, 1919 baseball season, and everybody kind of knows that if you're a baseball fan, you've studied a little bit of baseball history and have now realized, okay, what is happening or what happened during that time in the 1919 season. Now, of course, for those of you who have watched a good movie called Eight Men Out, okay, that basically talks about the uh, Black Sox scandal of 1919 and how the Chicago White Sox uh, back in that year were the best team in baseball. And by all statutes of the stats and the records they put up that year, they were the best team. And it comes to me as a surprise how a team like that would literally fall apart in a series against the Cincinnati Reds, who won the National League pennant that year. So as we take a look, I'm gonna. This is a presentation of Eight Men Out, the Black Sox and the 1919 World Series. And today, I'm just want to give a little sneak preview of a of a of a Stratomatic replay I'm about to do. I'm about to do the entire 1919 World Series between the White Sox and the Reds. It's a, ser it's, it's a World Series that absolutely screams for replay. And uh, let's uh, get out of here. Let's take a look at the uh, little bit about, as you can take a look now on, the, uh, on your screen, the 1919 Major League Baseball season according to Wikipedia. Okay, and we all know if you've known a little bit of the backstory that the that say allegedly and allegedly the Chicago White Sox purposely lost the World Series to the Reds because uh, Charles uh, Comiskey, who was the uh, owner of the White Sox that year, didn't want to give certain bonuses. There was talk that Eddie Chicote, who was supposed to receive a major bonus back in uh, back that year, was literally held out of starts so he wouldn't win his 30th game. There was talk. There was major talk that year. If you take a look at the regular season, you'll see how the White Sox uh, beat the Cleveland Indians by three and a half games, and the upstart Cincinnati Reds beat the New York Giants by nine games. And here you can also see as we go a little further, we take a look at uh, that. And uh, let's say let's click on the 1919 World Series real quick, and let's uh, let's have a look. Okay, that was also a best of nine. Now the 199, as we all know, the World Series is supposed to be a best of seven. Uh, it was made a best of nine by Major League Baseball. They were having, they were trying to bring back some uh, some popularity back to the sport. They were trying to bring uh, mostly, and also uh, World War One had just ended, and they needed to get America back into uh, the, the normal swing of things. I completely understand that. Uh, it didn't last long. It only lasted. Um, it only lasted three years until ba uh, Major League Baseball brought it back to a best of seven. And I find that to, to be interesting how they went ahead and pushed that, but they brought it back to seven. I guess a lot of people thought that, well, if you play, a, uh, it could, if it goes a full nine games into October, you know, the weather might not be, might be too cold to play and uh, maybe just not, not viable uh, conditions to play a World Series. Now, of course, we take a look at the modern day baseball era, and we now got baseball going into November with these, uh, with the wild cards and everything. And of course, we got it's it's very possible you could be playing a seventh game of a World Series in on the first week of November. So that was back then, and it's now. Uh, we take a look here. We see, you know, players such as, uh, but let's take a look at the 1919 Chicago White Sox real quick. Uh, Shoeless Joe Jackson. The Willie Mays of his day, was he? That man did everything. He could hit, he could run, he could field. He was amazing. Uh, you had you had uh, players such as him. You had Buck Weaver at third base. You had Chick Gandel at first base. You had Ray Schalk. And you had shortstop by the name of Sweet Risberg. This was a baseball team that was designed to win it all. And two years earlier, in 1917, it did. But... In 1919, this team was was actually even better. Was actually even better. So, let's take a uh, let's take another look here at uh, the Cincinnati. At uh, take a look at the Cincinnati Reds. Now, their star was center fielder Ed Roush. He led the league in hitting at 321. They had first baseman Jake Dalbert. They had second baseman Maury Rath. They had another baseball player that I know pretty well about. The name is Sherry McGee. Uh, very. Uh, it was a former Phillies star left fielder. Okay, but he could still come through in the clutch. The story was the fix 
you know, they said they got an unexpected assist for, uh, from a flu-stricken Faber, was left off the World Series roster. Uh, they said Arnold Rothstein helped fix the series. My question is this. I mean, I really, as I talk about the 1919 Black Sox, I really also want to talk about Shoeless Joe Jackson. And he really comes up in the clutch. Let, let's, t let's bring him up here real quick. Shoeless Joe Jackson, okay? Uh, as I said, the Willie Mays of his day. Let's take a look, take a look at his stats, okay? Batted 356, over almost 1,800 hits, 54 home runs, 785 runs batted in, okay? Played with the Athletics. He played with the Cleveland Naps slash Indians, and, of course, he ended at the White Sox. The, the Willie Mays of his day. He could do it all. And yet, the thing about it is, if you if you if you ever get a chance to read this on Wikipedia, and and you know, and of course he played with some of the other great players. He played with Ty Cobb. He played with Babe Ruth. Okay, and yet he was implicated in this in this Black Sox scandal. He was implicated in it, but did he really really take advantage of it? According to his stats, he didn't. In in in, um, in the World Series, he hit. So well, and I gotta. I guess I gotta go back there. Okay, I mean, he hit so well in this World Series. Okay, he bat. I mean, take a look. He batted three seventy five, five for twelve with men in scoring position, five runs, three doubles, a home run, and six RBIs. Does that sound like a guy who's trying to fix the series? There are so many people that are on the side of Shoeless Joe Jackson, and only last year. When Rob Manfred took over the uh, commissioner of baseball, they petitioned again to get, hey, Joe Jackson believes needs to be eligible for the Hall of Fame. And Rob Manfred said, no, there's just not enough evidence to overturn what Kennesaw Mountain Landis felt was necessary in order to put Shoeless Joe Jackson, to make Shoeless Joe Jackson ineligible. And I always say about that, before you put in any of our newer stars, Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens, Rafa Palmeiro, before you put any of them in the Hall of Fame, uh, Pete Rose and the ghost of Shoeless Joe Jackson better be waiting for them at the front door. Really, I just, I really just have to say that as we, as we look at, you know, as we look at him and, you know, Joe Jackson, I mean, 12 for 32, I, to me, it just doesn't sound like anybody that would, that just tried to lose. It, it just doesn't. They played it. They played eight. Now let's get back to the series itself. The Chicago White Sox and the Reds played eight games in the best of nine. Uh, the Reds won the series uh, five games to five games to three. It did not go the full nine. And if you ever get a chance to watch the movie Eight Men Out, that really is a very very good film. Uh, I think it's one of the best, one of the better baseball movies ever made. And it really really opens up your eyes on the on the status of fixing baseball, and is it really possible to fix baseball games? The answer, of course, to that is yes. It truly is. It really, truly is. Well, in this little preview that I did here, and let's go click a little bit on the Black Sox on the Black Sox scandal, and there, of course, are your players. Okay, Happy Felsch, Joe Jackson, Chick Gandel, Eddie Chicote, Claude Williams, Fred McMullen, Swede Risberg, and Buck and Buck Weaver. Eight men charged with selling out baseball, and at the end of the uh, and at the end of uh, of the movie, Eight Men Out, uh, the guy says, gambling won, baseball nothing. Yeah. And that really kind of made, uh, it really kind of made it look uh, just so fishy that the series was thrown like that only because Charles Comiskey failed to do what he was said he was going to do according to, um, uh, according to his contracts with the White Sox players. Remember, free agency is not existent here yet. Trade still, of course, existed, but there was no free agency. There was no Rule 5 draft. There was no, you know, the draft didn't exist yet either, okay? There was no draft, okay? The first Major League Basketball draft didn't take place until the 60s, okay? So he basically got picked up by your, by these owners to play ball. Uh, let's take a look at Fallout. Uh, Eddie Chicote, Shoeless Joe Jackson confessed the participation in the scheme to the grand jury, although Shoeless Joe Jackson, according with stats, didn't. So he confesses here. The trial begins in 1921, and all the verdicts, uh, the whole, it's all not guilty. And then uh, Landis is appointed commissioner and bans everybody from baseball. And let's take a look here real quick at, um, at the eight members. Eddie Chicote, he died on May 5th. 
1969 had the longest life. He admitted involvement in the fix. Uh, Oscar Felsch died in 64. Arnold Gandel, first baseman, he died at 82. Um, he did not play in the majors 1920, playing semi-pro ball. We all know what happened with Jackson. Fred McMullen passed away in 1952. He said he would not have been included in the fix had he not overheard the players' conversations. Uh, Swede Risberg, the shortstop, was Gandel's assistant and the muscle of the playing group. Uh, he was the last living player among the Black Sox. He died in 75. Uh, George Buck Weaver, he attended the initial meetings, and while he did not go on the fix, he knew about it. Uh, died in uh, 1956. Claude Williams, he went 0-3 for the series. Only one of the pitcher of baseball history, uh, reliever George Frazier of the 81 Yankees, ever lost three games in one World Series. Also banned was Joe Gedeon, second baseman for the St. Louis Browns. Gedeon placed bets since he learned the fix from Risberg, a friend of his. He informed Comiskey of the fix after the series, and after he gained the reward, he was banned for life also. And then, of course, you know, then, of course, after being banned, you can see what happened there as I leave the, leave the, uh, leave the screen on for those of you to uh, take a look. Uh, the reason why I'm posting this little, uh, this little preview is just to give a little bit of a background before I play the ball games. Um, there's so much to talk about in the ball games, okay, and I'm going to play them out. Now, what about the replay I'm about to do with Stratomatic in 1919? I already have the season. I'm all set and ready to roll with it. Uh, game one, I will probably do. Uh, I'll probably do game one on the next day. I'll probably not do game one today. But um, what about it? Question. Uh, the question I first ask myself is, who do I take? Now that's uh, that's that's a legitimate question. Who who do I take in this series? Okay. The more the the more fun would be to take the team that lost which would be the Chicago White Sox. So I should take the White Sox and beat the Reds and change history. But the problem is the White Sox should have won that series by all means. So if that being the case, should I go ahead and take the White Sox because they won this, because they didn't win? Or should I take the White Sox because they were supposed to win? Well, I batted myself thinking about that for a long period of time, and I said, well, the White Sox lost the World Series, I should take Chicago. But they were the better team in all phases over the Reds, they were the better team. So maybe I need to prove that the Reds were the better team over the White Sox and let the AI handle them. So in this series that I will, that I will do, starting game one, I'm going to play the Cincinnati Reds. So I'm going to take the Reds. I don't know much about them, and I'm going to do some more research on the Cincinnati Reds. And, you know, I'm speaking about that. Let's, um, let's have a look at them, shall we? Let's, uh, let's get back here, and uh, let's have a look at uh, the Cincinnati Reds here. Let's see. Let's go back here. And uh, about that. Did we bring them up? Nope, it doesn't. i got to go back to Seasons. So we go back to here, and we take a look at the 1919 Cincinnati Reds, and still brought me back. Okay, I'm not doing it right, I guess. But uh, let's take a look at the 1919 Cincinnati Reds. So I'm just gonna forget about it, and we'll just do it the hard. We'll just do it the old-fashioned way. Okay, how about that? The 1919 Cincinnati Reds season. Let's have a look at them here, shall we? Pitchers such as, let's see, Dutch Ruther, uh, Slim Sally. Uh, Roy Ray Fisher, the infielders Jake Dalbert, Heine Grow. We've seen, we've already seen Jake Dalbert, Heine Grow, and uh, Jimmy Smith when I played the Reds in a couple of uh, previews ago. Um, Sherry McGee, Ed Roush, who was supposed to be the best player. Manager was Pat Moran. Ed Roush was the best player for the Reds. He is, a, and he is a Hall of Famer. Let's see, three twenty-three average, twenty-three hundred hits. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll study more about the Reds, but. It's going to be very interesting for me to play this team. So I have decided to play the Cincinnati Reds against the 1919 White Sox in this best of nine World Series. So I hope you enjoyed my little preview. We will uh, get together with it. Game one will be starting very shortly. 
So until then, everyone, I want to thank you very much for watching my little preview. I know not, 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 not all will agree with what I've said. And of course, I've probably made historical errors everywhere. Feel free to correct me. Hey, nobody knows everything about baseball. <laughs> me, certainly I don't. Until then, until then, I want to wish everyone well. And uh, stay tuned for game one of the 1919 World Series, the Chicago White Sox versus Cincinnati Reds, Stratomatic Replay. Stay tuned, everybody. See you then.